All right, welcome everybody. For the uh, last session of the day, we're going to have a, a birds of a feather session to discuss instrument cluster and the instrument cluster expert group's work and any kind of uh, questions you might have or comments you might have or uh, discussion points you might have about the instrument cluster and the birds of a feather session. And the reason we switched rooms is because at the last minute, Dr. Y uh, said he could dial in. So I think he's on the uh, he's on Zoom. So if uh, he has a question, he can he can or he wants to say something, he can do that as well. I was just going to start with uh, one slide. That's all I've got. So uh, this will last as long as you guys want to keep talking, or until you get hungry and want to go eat. It's They're not on. Can you hear me? Maybe I got to talk like this, not like this. Okay, so um, this year, basically, this I got this from Yamaguchi-san the other day. So 2024, uh, basically, the instrument cluster IG EG is going to focus on the uh, new demo for CES 2024. Um, Suzuki is going to be uh, contributing an improved uh, UI design. Um, they want to focus on promotion uh, to the Japanese developer community, both expanding uh, the, command, the community by uh, participating in things like the open source uh, congruence and the Kensai Open Forum in Japan, as well as they're going to restart the um, they're going to restart the Japan local uh, call that they used to have. It'll be more of an open call, so there'll be uh, basically the Japanese uh, Japanese members will be able to speak Japanese and and work on technical issues, and then, as in the past, they'll report back uh, any questions or any updates to the greater community through the system architecture team and the the developer calls. And then um, they've also got their own Twitter handle, um, and then basically continue development. Um, with the container management daemon and um, include some additional technical features for uh, container usage. So that's all that I had. Um, Yamaguchi-san, did you want to say something to lead uh, to, as a, an additional lead-in? Uh, yes. So uh, I I currently I join uh, from uh, Japan so to right time, but uh, this session is uh, exciting and uh, too important for uh, a GR community. So <laughs> uh, I hope to join and I uh, success to join is a, a very good uh, experience for me. <laughs> so so uh, worth uh, sharing the uh, this year's uh, IC is the. Uh, Working plan. So, uh, in uh, SEZ, uh, think so. Uh, a big issue for uh, slow down to the uh, AGO uh, work uh, uh, caused by COVID uh, issues. So we cannot uh, meet uh, directly, and uh, we cannot discuss uh, face to face. So this year uh, we want to uh, reactivate uh, the AGL. Uh, so uh, this uh, point is uh, all of the AGO issue, but the uh, ICAG uh, uh, want to start and uh, want to uh, run on the top this issue, uh, this issue uh, to fix. So uh, what shows uh, each uh, promotion uh, task uh, for uh, uh, proposed by ICAG? So I see the member, so many uh, uh, member uh, live in the Japan. So uh, we uh, think so, uh, Japan side uh, has a local issue. Uh, it's a, uh, it, Japan side uh, not having the local promote. For example, uh, in European side, uh, each member uh, Demonstrate, demonstrate, and uh, promote uh, the uh, local uh, community. Uh, for example, uh, host them in host them and the embedded world and uh, other uh, local uh, local community uh, promote. So, 
uh, in Japan site A1241 for this, uh, these activities. So we are. Uh, we uh, uh, want to join and uh, promote in the uh, Japan local open source conference and the Kansai open forum. So it's a uh, promote task. And another one is uh, uh, development uh, works. So in instrument cluster AG, so important point is the uh, quality. That means uh, uh, open source uh, code qualification and uh, our other uh, code qualification. Uh, one of the points, so uh, Azure uh, is a development code uh, qualification. So we are uh, last uh, three years and two years, uh, we are discussing uh, how to uh, improve the code quality. So it's a, we are proposed uh, based on uh, uh, SPICE <laughs> uh, that uh, are uh, reusing, reusing code, uh, uh, are you uh, reused code uh, topic. So I want to uh, continue to discuss it, uh, this uh, point in this year. And uh, another uh, point is uh, uh, current uh, code qualification. So uh, last uh, years, so Ian Shimon uh, presented the static analysis tool, open source uh, static analysis tools. So this an uh, important point. And uh, I see they requested it, and uh, Ian Shimon uh, is this point. Uh, uh, I, I want to uh, continue to uh, reactivate this this point. So current uh, container management development and another uh, mini uh, library development. So try to work uh, this code qualification task. So our uh, trial point is uh, using uh, GitHub uh, code QL based uh, static analysis and fix the bug. So currently uh, we are we testing uh, by the uh, container management demo. Uh, it's a so, so good uh, uh, result for me. Uh, some uh, memory leak issue is uh, detected by the code QL. And another uh, issue, uh, another issue, and another bug uh, uh, find uh, by the uh, code QL. So it's uh, our starting point, and uh, this uh, code code qualification point is a uh, important point. Uh, I see. Z. It's a second. This uh, development uh, core development uh, with uh, core code qualification is a uh, important point. Uh, for uh, ICZ, it's uh, my opinion. So any feedback or comment for this uh, information? Okay, are there any uh, questions or comments in the room here? It's on. So if you talking about the code qualification part and you were showing earlier this afternoon or this morning on the um, part with different container blocks would you focus your code qualification parts to those elements in the container and would you like to use this for really libraries involved apis which have been pre-existing or would you focus on basically those code which you modify, which you actively touch to an make a creating a display instrument cluster or how far would you like to go or where do you would like to start with a qualification? Because I guess coming from automotive and A-SPICE, if someone comes and says, follow MISRA rules and apply them to the underlying Linux kernel, it doesn't make sense, right? It's quite pointless, you will not get out all the go-tos out of the kernel. You need to have an argumentation uh, why you have this, or if you've just single exit point, which is according to Misra, and you 
will have definitely statement in the kernel we have more than one exit point for a function which makes sense because you're an expert and you know what you've done so that's the question where do you want to scale so do you start with let's see how instrument cluster is created by the graphics framework your own layers will you stay inside the container will you want to go outside into the kernel space a question on my side oh um you said uh mr called uh, mr uh, so it's a uh, uh, difficult and uh, difficult and uh, uh big issue for uh, the, this activity so uh last two years uh, we are discussing uh, how to uh, qualify the code so uh, my opinion is uh, uh, Misra is uh, uh, one of the uh, good practice. Uh, Linux kernel uh, community has uh, another good practice. So uh, I think so. So uh, in Linux case, uh, I think a more better solution is uh, for up existing uh, code qualification. And uh, another one is uh, uh, IGL development code case. So in this case, so it's a uh, we are it's a, a new created new uh, new code uh, we created by own. In this case, so we can uh, follow up the Misra coding rule. So mainly we are uh, focused to the user and software. Uh, and uh, uh, in, inside the Azure community uh, development uh, code. So we can uh, select the uh, good, uh, each uh, good practice, one of the Misra, uh, another one of the uh, as a, uh, as a uh, good practice, but uh, uh, out of the uh, Azure uh, development code, uh, for example, the uh, ZWC and uh, uh, SystemD and other one. So SystemD is uh, one of the good example. Uh, SystemD uh, not uh, follow up uh, Misra, but uh, it's uh, uh, you. And the system the community uh, called qualification uh, used by the uh, synopsis poverty. So I think so. It's a good, uh, a good practice for open source community. So in this case, uh, I propose and um, I propose to the uh, code assessment uh, method. So. Uh, uh, we want to define the uh, good practice, uh, good practice for the uh, which is good code. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's uh, it's uh, our approach. It's a good step in this direction because the easiest way to get out of Misra is it is directly if you go for another code in language, right? So if you have a programming language, if you do it in Rust, or if you go for Java mm. and other applications, suddenly the Misra rules don't apply anymore that properly. <laughs> so. Uh, mm. I mean, is it shows it was written in an automotive la area where C was a dominating language, and there are more languages, some more robust languages, if you have Rust, and it shows you that you need to get in touch most likely also with OE, OEMs, tier ones, and say, how can we find an equivalent argumentation that Misra C is not the only coding guideline to be followed because there are many different coding guidelines available for different languages. There is linting qualification, other parts to do a lot of checks already also on the level and also made for different engineering practices or engineering levels from beginners to experts. And I guess it, therefore this is the argumentation where we maybe can progress at least to a certain extent and get more understanding because we need to be sure that we are we to understand that we cannot fully get MISRA compliant or something like this in this flow, but still have a high quality product. And this is basically what the MISRA wants. That it wants a stable, robust, high quality code. And it's not just by applying rules, but by understanding what you do. So uh, lastly, 
Uh, last uh, run, yes, it's a good, uh, good topic for uh, this uh, point. So uh, Linux kernel community uh, starting to use uh, last language uh, using the device driver development uh, because it uh, uh, strict it uh, uh, compiler and uh, uh, very uh, strict it and save strict it uh, code uh, strict it uh, compiler and uh, it uh, out to the uh, safe code. So it's a good uh, important good uh, good good uh, very good uh, point of the uh, our development. So. Uh, Java and another language case. So um, currently, uh, currently uh, out of scope for the uh, our uh, qualification plan because so it's uh, not a standard. I think it's not uh, out of the standard uh, of the uh, Linux-based instrument cluster. But uh, uh, if uh, uh, if uh, everyone have another opinion, I uh, need to uh, discuss this uh, point, uh, which language uh, is uh, need to focus. Uh, I have another one. <laughs> I saw that you, um, also in the presentation this morning, you, you were talking a lot about where to do core bounding, see that you have memory isolation, guaranteed la guaranteed scheduling mechanisms, and so on. And this puts a lot of dependency also to the underlying levels. So when you focus on the instrument cluster and say you put requirements, uh, on the underlying Linux kernels could be an interesting discussion also to share with, for example, safety relevant community because you will make requirements and requests from your container. And by leading this topic of having a container and using this basically, you say, a separation because you have different worlds moving in a different speed, uh, having a different level of robustness in mind, by writing down these requirements and have them settled, this can be helpful for a discussion with really the kernel community because then you can say here we need guarantees, we need to look into these items because you put a lot of dependency and reliability on your underlying system. And I believe this will be also some part of your argumentation. So um, I think it could also make sense to bring this discussion up again to say here is something that we don't care about. If you did or didn't care about right now, similar like you did in the past, also say we, we draw something here, we bring up an instrument cluster and, and give the examples, but we also use the ELISA community, for example, for discussing safety relevant parts. And I guess we did the start with the watchdog concept three years back there. And seeing the slides this morning, it sounds like we have a lot of discussion base because the container is the vehicle which you're using and what I liked about it was not simply about saying, I use the container to create safety. I could really see you use the container to yeah, split workloads, to show the different work streams, the different interests which are popping up. And I'm pretty sure you can even remove the containers from what you have shown and still put the same requirements to the kernel. So I see it as a, not a requirement to have a container, but a very convenient and good idea to bring this in. And here I see a good chance that we also drive this forward and put discussion. And if we have a container and a layer, you can really use this container later on for your use case. I guess tomorrow we have an others related section session also. And in this, the usage of container may become also stronger and the requirement the container puts to a system, the reliability, core boundings, and so on. I guess this, this will be a repeating pattern and it was a good base consideration which was brought up by this. So I don't know how others see it if there's uh, 
basic evolution from what we see from instrument cluster, from IVI systems towards the driver assistance use cases, which may end up to be headless, whereas the focus not on the graphics, but the concept of the system, this qualification still became or remains relevant. That's interesting, but I have the impression that a lot of other people in this space are more thinking hypervisor as opposed to trying to do containers. The, the, uh, there's all this mixed criticality stuff that people talk about, and it's all hypervisor as far as I know. So, I mean, I know people do abstractly talk about doing it with user space, but... I mean, realistically speaking, if you want to sit down today and try and architect it, it's hard to see how you could do it with just namespacing. So I'd be curious to see what folks in the kernel community would say, but I'm not too optimistic they'd be receptive, to be honest. But, it'd be, I mean, it's probably worth an investigation, but I think a lot of the stuff in this space, I think we probably need to start trying to push people to get together to actually settle on a uh, single open source hypervisor project that can be leveraged for some of these things. Um, and, you know, the, the container use for, like, the ICEG stuff, that, you know, with the, the QM isolation, I think, in my mind, I've never thought that the, you'd be ever be able to make a good story about safety. It's just the Linux kernel community don't expect you to use namespacing and actually make that hard declaration about it and it's you know routinely shown to be you know too much of a surface area for security so um maybe a, a, a you know a concentrated effort if enough people wanted to try and improve it there i could do something but you know it's i suspect would be not a lot of folks that gung-ho but i don't know maybe i'm wrong <laughs> So I would certainly agree because when you said the QM argumentation for the container that you really say, um, this is how I argument that it's separated. This is something which you most likely will not be able to achieve easily also with stronger concerns because you have also, you end up with a freedom for interference argumentation also and then you schedule workloads and if there's a major GPU task, if you have dynamic voltage frequency scaling aspects, you have DMAs, you have interrupts which could trigger oh. the system, then you have, even if you leave the container, you have underlying ARM trusted firmware, if you're an ARM device, opti mechanisms, and let's assume there's a trusted application which in the IVI system, which does a blocking call and does something wrong with the ARM trusted firmware and it blocks certain ARM cores or whatever, then suddenly your whole argumentation breaks down, right? So there's a many things and for this, for now, the, the idea to put in hypervisor gives a lot of security benefits, safety benefits, but it also adds a lot of complexity to the system. And it's typically like, well, we already have a complex scenario and we just add another layer of complexity in there to make it less complex. It's, the pr I guess the problems have to be solved. The nice thing about the hypervisor part is that you have a reduced code base, or if you take an artist like a free artist or their fire, you also have a reduced code base in which you can operate, but you may not be able to fulfill your use cases, and then you still have the large workloads in there, and for me personally, I see that the instrument cluster at least is something where you can make a lot of yeah, trials and assumptions in there because you're still in a, you're in a safety, mixed criticality workload scenario but you're in a very relaxed, nice scenario world because, so I, I even don't see the proper or the hard real-time demands for the instrument cluster. Of course, you have it as a convenience functionality. You want to have a speedometer and the, the meter really acting smoothly. It should not be one frame per second, something like this. But from a safety perspective, you can maybe left with 10 frames per second as long as 
the things, the safety relevant information is shown, right? And by this, you can put a lot of things away for it. Uh, yeah, and the container is really more a development architectural vehicle for working with different teams because we see this that more and more people are involved and assume like OE comes and say, well, the instrument cluster is done by company A and the uh, IVI system is done by company B, but we all run it on a single vehicle computer, which may also fall into the, a little bit into this software-defined vehicle parts, which we have seen today, that things really get separated and split. And I don't know if it makes it life easier if there is a hypervisor involved to handle these workloads or if it's a container, I guess the complexity may remain. So you want to add something, then I hand over. I think it's likely to be that any full SDV view of a system, you have both probably. I mean, if you want to go to a product, um, you know, the container stuff that's talked about with like, you know, potentially using an orchestrator and stuff, that's all pure user space stuff. And, uh, you know, this, you know, big development benefits there. But to try and run those different workloads on the same system and actually have like the instrument cluster and uh, infotainment and potentially other things, I think realistically speaking, if you're building it in the near future, it's you're going to need a hypervisor. I don't think you could get to production without it. Um, I mean, I'm not a production automotive, you know, person at an OEM, but it's just, I can't see how you could do it, to be honest. Um, even, even ignoring, um, safety certification, it's just, how do you make all those pieces work together? Um, you know, if you want to have any guarantees about performance of the instrument cluster versus the infotainment, doing it in, you know, pure user space in one Linux kernel, it's, you know, it's possible, but it's a lot of work, right? And it's, there's, you know, commercial hypervisors, there's open source ones that people do work on to, to show working, like EPAM with Zen. I mean, those are turnkey things today. And it's it's hard to, I think, shift to, let's do this very, you know, untested approach of just like, let's do something else. Especially because I think in academia, hypervisors are viewed as this is how you do things as well. So, like, it's it's not, I don't think that the, you know, wider software industry thinks that <laughs> that there are other really viable solutions for some of these types of things. So, I mean, I think what we suffer from a little bit is on the open source side, it's not really been very easy to piece together a good demo for some of these things because Zen is lagged a bit compared to the commercial hypervisors. Um, some of that, you know, it just stems because a lot of its its orientation was just server use cases, right? But, um, and, you know, and, and people had different entries in the game. Like, I mean, if we were all on x86, Acorn would actually probably be a useful thing. But, you know, everybody else is on ARM in the, you know, automotive world and, and embedded in general. And, you know, so that's not really an option. Um, so I, I think, you know, I, I know people would like to be able to s build a single kernel and slap containers on it and somehow magically it would solve, <laughs> solve all problems. But I, I think it's, you know, maybe someday there'll be a kernel innovation that makes that possible. But I think in the near future, I'm, I'm hard pressed to see how you can't get away if, you know, if not a hypervisor, having an RTOS on a separate core. I mean, there's always going to be some need to have that separate separation somehow. I'm also pretty convinced that you will have always, for now, at least an RTOS next to it. You need to have it because even if we build a system here, if you consider certain can response times which you need to follow, if you have certain field, and maybe you can get around with certain things, but if you're seeing also new requirements from power consumption, right, because devices with the electrification, uh, I, ha I heard more or less like 10 to 15 years how important power consumption will become, but in the end for an infotainment system, yes, you do certain things, but nobody was really caring if you have 
dynamic for frequency scaling or switch on or off, right? And you have your kernel co consideration, you go for 125 degrees and everything is good. And this is just the setup, but I believe these kind of fields of power saving and the sustainability comes in C carbon neutral development and these are all requirements which are not yet touched. And by this the people even, they may make it a suddenly a setting point and say, well, my IVI system and my computer uses less power and then you come up and say, well, okay, let's see where I can shut down, bring in things on and off, reduce frequencies, use more RTOS next to it on a smaller core, and have better load balancing in there. Uh, you never know how crazy the people turn, right? So if you just get your carbon neutral sticker earlier and you can set and you get another kilometer or a mile of distance with your battery, maybe come then all these little tweaks where they already remove the, the mirrors from the side, right, and replace it by camera, basically because they can save 6% of fuel. It's not cheaper that much, right, to have a critical mirror and then put in a camera, but you reduce fuel or battery consumption, and that's why, like the Honda E got these little wings on the side with a camera, right? And But this also then again puts a much more hurdle on the software development, which we have, and also on the real-time demands and so on. Well, the system gets more complex and uh, the things really tie together then and all these use cases fuse together and still we have an underlying base system which is almost identical but it will most likely include hypervisor and will include real-time operating system yeah, or, or a bunch of boxes. <laughs> Yeah, Gucci san you want to say something on top? We have, we have five more minutes. We just want to check if you fall asleep. Hmm? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, it works. Uh, can, 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 I share my, can I share my screen? I don't know. You can give it a try. Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay. We can see uh, the oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, this material is uh, uh, 2021, uh, yes, uh, all, all member meeting spring uh, material. So, uh, I share the uh, uh, out of the Linux site uh, architecture. Uh, it's a this uh, slide uh, described uh, uh, this information uh, mainly. So, so uh, this uh, uh, this slide shows the uh, same information as uh, my uh, to uh, today's my uh, presentation. So, uh, this. Uh, uh, architecture diagram shows a uh, uh, safety side and the real time side is a uh, safety island. Uh, uh, it uses uh, uh, lower, uh, low layers isolation method. So in this case, uh, uh, out of using the out of the uh, uh, MCU out of the SOC, but uh, not uh, fix this uh, architecture. So uh, SOC, uh, uh, this MCU inside the Inside the SOC, it's okay. So this uh, uh, isolation using the hy hypervisor, it's okay. So it's this uh, this point is uh, our uh, architecture. So du uh, dual layer isolation architecture. So uh, this diagram shows a uh, uh, architecture for the uh, more detail of the uh, architecture. So uh, to uh, uh, real time uh, function inside the uh, out of the uh, out of Linux, uh, for example, uh, fuel consumption uh, and uh, uh, the trip uh, calibration and uh, alarm and uh, another function. 
And uh, this uh, uh, part uh, transfers transfer the uh, information to the uh, instrument cluster container side. So this is a uh, safe, safe uh, required ACL and uh, more, more high uh, level uh, Q quality management uh, part inside the, uh, this part. So uh, cluster container, so uh, required uh, higher than uh, quality management uh, by the uh, IVI site. Those are uh, more uh, highly uh, quality management requires uh, real time on the safety side. So this uh, isolation, this isolation uh, is a uh, base, uh, base idea and the base architecture uh, of the uh, instrument across the AC. So this uh, point is an uh, uh, answer for your uh, opinion, opinion and uh, question, uh, question. So uh, or not? I guess this gives a good fit from what you're drawing so far. So you, you can say that's really this direction from the IVI container to a cluster container, which puts higher level on the QM part to uh, the highest level, so to say, until ASIL for the real-time functionality for the safety artists. I'm still a bit fan, a big fan of uh, basically bringing the safety real-time functions into the cluster container or into a Linux container and then have the shadowing and the monitoring also on the artist non-Linux non OS side because if you anyway see a pass over the long time where elements migrate from the artos into the into the rich OS as Linux you can start already now just start implementing things and as you anyway have connections, you have updates and so on, you can just bring in also uh, error handling and so on and collect fleet data later on, right? If you have these things set up, you have it in your safety concept, you have always the monitoring which does the check in case there is inconsistency from what you've done in the instrument cluster. On the ARTA side, you can always swap the rendering, swap the drawing parts to the ASL area. You've come still a very good safety concept in there for your, based on your existing argumentation, but you also have a way forward to put more and more responsibility to the Linux system because this is basically, I guess, what you wanted to have for a lot of use cases also. If you suddenly start drawing more fancy animated effects in your instrument cluster, and this is a safety functionality, and the GPU need to be shared, the artist cannot do full drawing, has limitations on the memory addressing and so on, then you may end up and need to put more on the QM towards an ASL cluster container. And by this starting a certain shadowing and having both sides can be also a good way forward. Okay, thanks everybody. I think that's a wrap for today. Uh, we'll be having um, some food and some drinks outside, uh, so you can continue the conversation in the in the hallway. And uh, hope you enjoyed the first day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks.